Hello Legends, in this video I'm going to show you how to add SMS functionality to your 11 Labs voice agent. So I'm going to show you exactly how to get your 11 Labs agent to dynamically during the conversation be able to send an SMS to your customer. And I'm also going to show you how to let your customer also have a back and forth conversation via SMS with another AI agent. Because the chances are that when your customer gets this SMS from your 11 Labs agent and they hang up the phone call that they might actually want to continue having a conversation via SMS or at least that's what I would want. If I had an SMS from some kind of system, I'd want the ability to be able to respond back and say, oh, can you actually cancel this appointment or can you reschedule for tomorrow? And then for the system to be able to actually do that back for me via SMS. Now we're also gonna give our 11 Labs agent the ability to access a database of all the previous historical SMSs that this customer has had with our other SMS agent. So that means during the call, the customer can say, oh, can you check my conversation history with the SMS agent? And then the 11 Labs agent can pull up that context and then have it for the call. So that means in this video, we're actually gonna be learning about how to build a more advanced calling an SMS system. All right, let me give you guys a demo. Just gonna call my agent now. Hi, my name is Kevin. How can I help you? Hey Kevin, can I book in my car for a service? Yes, I can help you with that. What day and time would you like to book your service for? Let's do Monday 23rd of June at 4 p.m. Okay, I have booked you in for a service on Monday, June 23rd at 4 p.m. I will send you a text to confirm. Is there anything else I can help you with? Uh, no, that's it. Thank you very much. See you later. All right, done. So we got the SMS directly during the call. Your car, was, uh, your car service has been booked in for Monday, 23rd of June at 4 p.m. And now I actually have to reschedule that. So I'm just going to say, sorry, can I please reschedule that to Tuesday, 24th at 9 a.m.? Let's hit send. So this is going to go across to my NAN SMS agent. And then there we go, we got a response. So of course your appointment's rescheduled to Tuesday 24th at 9 a.m. Let me know if you need to make any further changes. So as you can see, as a customer, I went from a phone call where I made a booking, I then got an SMS with the confirmation, and then I actually had to reschedule that and I just had to SMS back. I didn't have to call back again. So this is super convenient. And then from here, I can actually keep having a back and forth conversation. Hey, this is my make and model. What services do you offer? What's the price gonna be? Which means I don't actually have to call again to make any of these changes. Okay, but let's say I actually want to test my agent's memory. My name is Kevin. How can I help you? Hey, Kevin, I called before. Can you please pull up my SMS history? Okay, I have pulled up your SMS history. It looks like you have an appointment scheduled for Tuesday, June 24th at 9 a.m. Is there anything else? No, that's it. Thank you very much. See ya. All right, so it looks like our agent actually has the memory of this SMS conversation and knows our latest rescheduled appointment. Now for this video, I really just wanna focus on how to give your 11 Labs agent the functionality to send an SMS during a phone call. I don't wanna focus on how to build an inbound or outbound agent flow. I don't wanna rebuild an AI SMS agent and I don't wanna reconfigure a database for NAN. So I'm gonna link all of these specialized videos in the description of this video. And in order to follow along today, just go ahead to this video, um, watch it, download this workflow, install it into your NAN and just configure it. And then same thing over here, just go ahead and watch this. This one's like 10 minutes long, and then you learn how to set up a database for NAN. Okay, so let's go across to 11 Labs. If you don't already have an account, I'm gonna have an affiliate link that you can use in a description of this video. Uh, if you use that link, it gives me a bit of a kickback. Now let's go across to the Agents tab, and I've already got a pre-configured voice and SMS agent. So this agent already has a phone number associated with it. That's why I was able to just call from my phone and I was able to tap into this um, Kevin assistant agent. And my prompt is very simple, but the two things I wanna bring your attention to is these two tools over here. So I have a tool that lets our agent actually send an SMS and then another tool that lets the agent check the uh, historical SMSs. So let's take a look at how to build out these tool calls in 11 Labs. Let's go into the very, very bottom. I've got them established over here, check SMS and send SMS. So for send SMS, let's open this up. And on the right hand side, I've just made my name send underscore SMS. I've got the description, which is use this tool to send an SMS. And now I'm pointing this tool across to an NAN scenario. And that's this scenario over here. Now I'll come back to the method and URL in just a second. But the two parameters that we're sending across to NAN is this system underscore caller underscore ID. And that's the phone number. Well, that's my phone number. That's the customer's. That's a caller's phone number. And then a little bit lower, we have SMS underscore message. And this is that dynamic message. And in our case, it was just the scheduling of our car service. Scrolling down, I have no other parameters that I'm sending across. Now, quick note on this variable over here. In the 11labs documentation, 
we have uh, these two variables. We have the system underscore caller ID, and that's the caller's phone number. And then we have system underscore called number, and that's the destination phone number. So in my scenario, I'm actually calling the AI agent. So I, I'm placing the call and therefore I am the caller and therefore we are using this variable for this setting over here. But if I was building an outbound caller where the AI is placing the call and then I actually have to pick it up on my phone, I am the destination phone number. So for outbound callers, I use this variable. So I would just copy this, control C, and then I would just backspace this and paste it into here. So that's the only difference. This one is used for inbound calls and then the other one is used for outbound calls. Aside from that, this is actually all there is to it. So now back in NAN, we know that the packet of information that we're getting from 11 labs includes a dynamic SMS that we have to send. So all we need to do is capture that SMS in a webhook, plug that SMS into Twilio so we can actually have some uh, way of sending an SMS to a phone number. And then we're logging that SMS, the message that we're sending to the customer in our Superbase database. And that database is over here. Once again, you just need to watch that Superbase configuration video that I linked before. But as you can see, we've got a bunch of different messages attached to a certain phone number. So this is my phone number. And then on the right hand side, I've got the AI messages and then I've got the human messages. So as you can see, we've got different types of messages. So we first have the AI message, which the content is your car service has been booked for Monday, June 23rd, which is this first message over here. Then we have the type human, which is the human reply. So my, my green reply over here, sorry, can I reschedule that? And as you can see, the content is, sorry, can I reschedule that? And then finally we have type AI because the AI responded saying, yeah, of course, that's no problem, we can reschedule. And each of these message has the unique session ID, which is just the mobile phone number. So if you had 10 different calls with 10 different customers, then you would still have like the AI and human messages over here. But within the session ID, you just have the different person's phone number. So now to dive into this flow, if I open up the webhook and I just scroll down over here, let me just zoom in. You can see that the query parameters that we're sending across from 11 labs, one include the phone number. So that's how we know who to send the message to in Twilio. And then two, the SMS message, which again, we're just plugging directly into that Twilio module. So your car service has been booked for Monday, 23rd of June at 4 p.m. So if we come out of here and click into Twilio, our configuration is the SMS resource. We're sending the message. The from message is the Twilio number. So this is the exact same number that I've attached to my 11 labs agent. So this is really cool because when the customer calls up my business, this is the number that they're calling. And when they receive the SMS from me, it's the exact same phone number. So it's consistent across both SMS and voice. So then this two number we're getting from our webhook, like we, like we saw before, it's this parameter over here. So I just drag this onto the canvas. And then for this value, the message value that we're sending across to the user, this is just this value over here. So SMS underscore message, and we just plonk it directly into here. We don't have to do anything else with this. Now on the right hand side is just basically a bunch of info saying, yep, cool, that was sent. And then we go across to Superbase. And over here, after we authenticate our account by watching that very first video that I linked, all we're doing is we're finding the table name. So NAN underscore chat underscore histories. And that's just that table that we created in that first video. So as you can see, NAN underscore chat underscore history. So it, it all makes sense, it all plugs in. And then scrolling down, all I've done over here is I've got the field name, which is just session ID. And my parameter for this is the phone number. So once again, you just go back to the webhook. So one node back, you find that phone number and you drag and drop it into here. And that number here, once again, is this unique identifier for this message. So when the AI agent is actually pulling up all the, uh, like the SMS memory, we're making an API call to this database. We're putting the search filter as the phone number of the user. And then we can return like the collection of messages. That's how we that's how we actually make that search history work. And then down the bottom is where we're sending the message. So this mumbo jumbo of text here is actually because when you have an AI agent with Postgres attached to the chat memory, this is the type of information it sends across to your Superbase database. So all I'm doing is just trying to keep that format consistent. But realistically, what you could do is you could just erase this stuff here because it's not necessary. And all you wanna know is like, all right, is it an AI message or a human message? And then what is that message? Now you can pause the video here and just copy this out for yourself. Or I'm gonna be making this workflow, this SMS workflow, and then this get SMS history workflow available on my Gumroad. So you can just click the link below, go download everything and then install it into your NAN. 
And then once we execute this super base node, you can see we have a response back saying, yep, it was successfully added. The unique ID is 159. Here is the session ID and here's that message. And that's 159 session ID and message. So this entire process is actually pretty simple so far to send that SMS. But when it comes to us giving the customer the ability to actually have a back and forth conversation with an AI agent, then we need this bad boy to be installed. Um, I had to make one adjustment. I realized that my Postgres chat memory node, it wasn't working. For some reason, it kind of bugged out. I did a little bit of research in the NAN community and I think this might be a long-standing issue. Um, I wasn't able to figure it out, so I disconnected it. And all I've done is I've actually added in the messages myself manually using the super base node. So instead of the agent managing the entire conversation history, like what we would actually ideally want, we just have to manually do it. So don't worry, this workflow will be included in my Gumroad as well. So the key adjustment that I've done is this human response is sent across into this workflow to be processed by this AI agent. When it's sent into this workflow, the first thing I actually want to do is log the human response in our database. So that's why we're using the super base over here. And if you click this open, it's the same thing as before. So we're logging the message against the sender's phone number. And then over here, we have the exact same value as before. But this time, instead of type AI, we're just using type human because it's from the human. Everything else is exactly the same in this flow. And then the final super base that we're using over here, if I click into it, it's just mapping the AI's response. So after the AI agent replies, we push it out through Twilio and that's the response we got over here. And then you can just literally marry that up to this response, which is type AI. And of course your appointment is rescheduled to Tuesday, which is just this message over here. So this is that last execution in our NAN scenario. Now, the cool thing is that you can literally have five, 10, 15, 100 messages back and forth and have a long conversation and everything's added to that database. So now to finish off our send SMS tool call, um, actually for this, my preference would be to use a post call because we're kind of like posting some information somewhere. Um, when you use the post call method here, you actually have to configure some other settings in this tool call. So just to kind of keep things easy, I'm using the get method. Typically get is to get like retrieve something. Like when we're getting all the SMS history, we're getting that history because we're waiting for a response from the API call. But for now, this actually works as well. And then the webhook URL, as you can imagine, is just obtained from this webhook over here. So I was using the test webhook so we can actually see the data on the canvas, but you would flick over to production, you'd copy this, you would make sure that you're using the get request with the exact same request method from the 11 labs agent. And then you'd flick this across to active and then make sure you save everything. And now your agent will be able to access this 24 seven. And the final tool call is the tool call to check all the SMS history. So to check the SMS history, it's similar to before. We're using the get method. We're using the webhook URL for the new NAN flow, which is this flow over here. So we're landing in the webhook. And let's take a look at what parameters we're setting across. So once again, the number parameter, we need this because we need to go across to our database and have a way to filter out the entire results for the database. And that filter is our customer's phone number. And then that's it. We actually don't have any other parameters that we're sending through. We just need to send the number and then we're going to receive a response, which is the history of the SMSs. So now taking a look over here, the 11 labs agent is sending the customer's phone number into this webhook. We take that phone number, we plug it into this super base node and we filter all the results by that customer's phone number. We then get the results and we directly send them back into our 11 labs agent by using this respond to webhook node. So once again, going into this webhook over here, just going down a little bit, the query parameter is the phone number. Then we go across to our super base node and we're using the resource row. We're then using the operation of get many. So we actually want to return all the message history. So we've got one, two and three messages, which is one, two and three messages because they're all the same phone number. We choose our table name, NAN underscore chat underscore histories. As you know, that's the table name from super base. So an interesting setting to look at is this limit 10. So with the limit 10, we're saying that, okay, let's assume that I've had 15, 20 different messages with the AI. So then collectively my 15 messages and then the 15 AI responses makes 30. I'd only be able to return 10. So I can either cut it short and get the most recent messages back. Or if I want to return all the messages, then, you know, you kind of set this to whatever you think is appropriate. But then instead of sending all these messages back to the 11 labs agent, because as you can see, all we really need is like the um, the ability to distinguish between AI and what the AI sent and then human and then what the human sent. So 
if you really have a lot of messages and a long co like conversation history, you might put a code node into here and you might actually first parse all of these to remove all the excess text because you don't need to have the phone number here. You don't need this ID. And then you would probably just cycle through these message variables and create an output that's just one flat markdown text that includes all the different AI responses, human responses in chronological order. So then from here, you could just take that text, which now has a lot fewer tokens and send it directly to your 11 labs agent. Or if you wanted, you can actually just run it through an LLM step over here. So let's say basic LLM chain, and you would just pass this markdown of all the messages chrono in chronological order, put them into this LLM chain, and then ask this LLM to take it, summarize it in one or two sentences, and then send it across to your 11 labs agent. So it really depends on how, like, how lengthy the history is and exactly what you need the data to do. But this is one way to modify this workflow to just conserve tokens and send fewer tokens back to your 11 labs agent. But for our scenario, after we get all those rows back, which was three in our case, we then go across to this respond to webhook node and we're sending all those items back into the 11 labs agent. So the response was an array of objects. So each different message from the AI and the human. And that's why the 11 labs agent was able to interpret. Okay, you originally got this SMS from us that said, you know, it's on Monday at four and then you reschedule to Tuesday at 9 a.m. And make sure when you're using this respond to webhook node, you are going across to this webhook and you're saying respond with the respond webhook node. And that's it guys. Now you have your send SMS function as well as your check SMS function. So when it comes to your prompt, I would just try and be super clear about what the purpose of each of those functions are. You can send the SMS during the call. You can send multiple SMSs during the call. Um, I think a lot of people right now would have just been waiting to have like the post call transcript to analyze the post call transcript and realize, all right, was there a need to send an SMS? But now with this simple little hack and a simple NAN workflow, you could actually send SMSs dynamically during the phone conversation. And if you wanted to, uh, if you wanted to just check the SMS history during the conversation as well, let's say you're having a five minute phone call, you send the initial SMS to the customer to say, hey, you know, um, send me your PIN verification number via SMS. Then when the customer is like, yep, I've sent the PIN verification number, then you can use this check SMS function to retrieve the PIN verification number and then, you know, run it through your other security tests. So, there's dynamic ways that you can actually use these two in tandem in a, in a conversation. So yeah, it's really interesting what you can do with this stuff. Just really depends on your use case. But uh, yeah, don't follow this prompt. It's very basic. Um, I'm really restricting the AI over here, just saying do one simple thing um, just for the purpose of this demo. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this informative. Once again, you can access all the resources in my Gumroad. If you've stuck around this far, I'd appreciate if you can drop a like, if you can put a comment on this video. And if you haven't already, if you could subscribe, all those three things will tell the algorithm that this is a video that we should push out to more people, which would help me grow my channel. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this new SMS feature for your 11 labs agents. I'll see you next time.